Hello, everybody. Welcome to the podcast this week. We have a very interesting topic that we're going to talk about. Basically, it's about real estate. So you know how I like to talk about spirituality in our daily life. And I think that um, buying a property or selling a property has um, very deep a spiritual connection to people. And I invited Amy Blake today, who is an expert in this field. And I wanted to um, ask her to share her experiences and what she's found when she's helped families or, or just individuals either buy a house, their dream house, or either sell a house that's been in their family for years. So I wanted to talk a little bit today on this podcast about how um, buying and selling a property is is part of our spiritual experience in our life. And um, so without further ado, I'm going to uh, let Amy introduce herself. And also, Amy, I would like for you to just tell our listeners a little bit about how um, your journey towards becoming a realtor. How did that happen for you and how were you pulled to that calling? Sure. Thanks for having me today. You're welcome. I'm excited. I think this is a really great angle to take. I know so much of you know, it's so much money based and, you know, mm -hmm. the media is like data and, and markets up and markets down. Right. But at the end of the day, these are people making very real decisions. And, um, you know, there's, there's a lot at stake sometimes, and there really is such an emotional component that I guess I get a really unique window into, to be honest. I'm I'm honored, honestly, to be a part of people's journey through this. It's sincere when I say that because um, I do get a unique perspective on it. So thanks for for having me and taking this. Yeah, I I was thinking about um, especially now, you know, when the market. I'm not sure about other countries, but in Canada, for example, uh, so much has been going on in the market, and um, you know, we had we had seen two years ago where prices just went up, up, up while we yeah. were having this COVID, and everybody was right. kind of like at home and making their homes comfortable, and so we saw the soaring prices, and and of course now we've seen this like. It's just like nothing is happening because we have interest rates rising. Yeah. And I wanted to discuss a little bit about how, um, you know, how spirituality has its place in this process. And I think talking to a realtor like yourself, who's had obviously lots of experience with people selling, sometimes people are getting divorced and they have to sell their home and sure. it's very heartbreaking or sometimes people are yeah. buying the dream or they just got married. Yeah. And I wanted just to ha give a little insight on, um, on, you know, on how that emotionally is, um, you know, can be kind of either it can help people in their spiritual yeah, sure. life or it can yeah. make people feel like depressed yeah. or, you know, yeah. so I wanted to um, talk well, a little bit about little, that. A little bit of um, background to how I got here and why um, I ended up even having a more of a connected uh, journey through real estate with, with my clients. Great. So, you know, my 20s, I was in business. So I did a lot of, um, you know, the nine to five, the grind, the grab the next ring sort of thing. Right. And it suited me at the time for sure. I, uh, I had a bit of a crisis of conscience, like maybe something greater is in store for me. And I actually went to, to nursing school and I, and I became an LPN. Okay. And I really, really enjoyed that. And then when, um, uh, my husband at the time we moved up to Kelowna, um, we ended up getting back. I was a nurse at that time. We ended up getting back into business. So then I went into sole proprietorship which of course is its own little special <laughs> experience oh, yes. in spirituality, let me tell you. Oh yeah, um, you learn a lot about yourself when you have your own business. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. for sure. So, um, but in, in the back, I always had this like, really this, I loved real estate. I was always the one like driving down the street, giving curb appeal, like, oh, that's what I would do with that house. That's what I would do with that house. But um, I never, ever thought truly that it would be a career that, um, you know, a profession for me um, made that choice in about 2015 to give it a try, just, you know, to work my own personal properties. And it ended up being um, a natural fit. I would consider myself a jack of all trades, master of none. Mm -hmm. And I never thought that there'd be a job that would be such a great fit. But I soon realized when I was going through it, because I thought real estate was so transactional, I didn't know enough about the process. And mm -hmm. I thought it was more about, you know, you meet somebody, you network, you, you know, you help them through that buy sell. And then, you know, just kind of go from there. When I realized that there was also a relational style 
Um, Mm -hmm. I knew that was going to be a fit. And I had taken all of these things through my nursing and through my own personal growth and development and really started to work that in. When I realized that I could form these really great connections with my clients as well. And it was just so deeply fulfilling um, to exercise that, that part of my, my um, core needs and things like that. So um, I've, and yeah, the last sort of seven years have been um, really a journey in learning about people's you know, their, their, their needs and their, what, what emotionally is driving them to these. Cause it's not really just about these are these nests, right. They could be, you know, growing their family there or, you know, just starting off as a couple and things like that. So there's always that element that's underlying. And I'll be honest, I really try to get my clients to recognize that because sometimes they get overwhelmed or they get bogged in the numbers or, you know, real estate's not smooth. There's, there's, there's things along the road. And I think if they stay connected to their why and they stay connected, even, especially if couples are doing these, that they're, that they're on the same page and they're, and they're really moving towards that goal together, um, really helps them connect in that process. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like it can be a a kind of a emotional uh, roller coaster. And um, so in your, in your, um, you know, in your dealings with, with clients, do you often find that clients have that part of them, which is they understand that there's a spiritual aspect in buying a house or in selling a house? Like, for example, I know that in my, for my house, my house over the years and probably all the houses I've lived in before, but particularly the one that I live in now, I've lived in for uh, 16 years. Mm -hmm. And so I, in, in the beginning, I didn't love it. It was just like, okay, you know, it's, it's, it's okay. It had the right, um, it was close to the schools where I wanted for my children and stuff, but it wasn't, it wasn't really the house that I thought I would want, but over the years it became that for me. Right. Yeah. It's interesting. It depends on if they're first time buyers, if they're downsizers, I think for the first time buyer, they're just sort of a deer in headlights a bit, right? Like they're, they're kind Mm -hmm. of trying to um, navigate all of the steps and understanding. So I really try to get them to connect um, with and, and, and really sort of, um, you know, go through the journey of this is my first right? Like really these, this is going to be a core memory. They may go on to own five, six, seven properties. Mm. This one Mm. is the one that they're going to remember the most, right? So even Mm -hmm. when we're going on showings, I try to really get them to imagine the space, you know, like how, how does this feel? Like we're going through homes together. Yeah. We're looking at fit fit and form, some finishings, things that flow and that, but I really try to get them to say like, how does this layout feel for you? Like, is this something that, um, you can see, you know, not just your furniture, but your friends over and Mm -hmm. because they've never really gone through houses this way. Right. So trying to get them. And then just knowing my experience, I'd be like, Oh, you know what? This is not you know, you, you're, you're probably going to have some issues with X, Y, Z in the house and just trying to get them to visualize a lot. Yeah. Uh, the ones, the ones that I think are the most sort of journey focused are downsizers okay. for sure. I would have to say, um, they've had, they've had a life in that home. Yes. And their every room has a thousand memories And here they are, they're excited about their next opportunity to be certain for sure, whether it's, you know, the, the fancy bougie downtown condo that, you know, while they, 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 their, their snowbird life and that, but yeah, um, yeah, that is, that is a piece that even when we're sitting down and talking contracts and we're talking numbers, sometimes I'll have, you know, often, often the wife or what have you, you know, they'll cry and they'll Mm -hmm. be at the dinner table because the reality is, is real, you know, when you start to work with paperwork and things like that. So um, we just stop. Yes. So pens down. Yeah. And let's work through this. Like, let's, you yeah. know, let's, let's really get at what this piece is. And sometimes they'll, they'll, they'll take me through the house and it'll be a memory that was sparked and they'll show me a spot in, in the house that they were remembering. Yes. And so I think because at the end of the day, especially for, like I said, the downsizers or maybe someone who's lost a parent and they're, it's an estate sale. Um, 99% sure they're not going back in that home. They're not going back in. Oh, wow. So for these like next eight weeks, 12 weeks, whatever it might take, 
um, yes. 20 years is going to get wrapped up in three months. Yeah. So um, it's really just holding space for them, right? While, yeah. they, while they go through and acknowledge, or sometimes I'm taking them there. Sometimes I recognize, you know, there's, I can feel that there's a stoicism that's there. And sometimes mm-hmm. it's just reaching out. Like I said, I'm, I'm a relational realtor. So I, I usually have a, a closer connection with them. I wouldn't just go out, you know, going out to touch someone's hand. On a yes, of table. course. Yeah. 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 But sometimes Once you've I'll just built a out. relationship with them and you understand sure. what's going sometimes, on. You know, I'll just yes. reach out and touch their hand and be like, you okay? Like, yes. is there something, you know, yeah. and, and you know, it's like, I just realized this is my last Christmas to decorate this house or what have you. So, yes. Yeah. And I think that's important, you know, for a for realtor to come from that place of knowing that you are selling somebody's house, but it's filled with memories for them and to have that ability to hold the space to have the ability to to slow down when they need a moment and and that's why actually I was wanting to interview today uh, and talk a little bit about how because it's also responsibility it's a responsibility when you're helping people to let go uh, of that to neatly wrap it up and say okay now we're ready to go and it's so important to have the right person to help you to do that right you know, yeah. sometimes they'll uh, like some, like I said, real estate, it's not always smooth. And sometimes there'll be um, a stuck in, in the contract negotiations or this or that sometimes in negotiations, actually, that'll come up, yeah. um, you know, and I'm like, this isn't about the $2,000 that we're trying to go back and forth about. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And just making sh- like, just having them dialogue and talk about, um, uh, you know, what is, what could this really be about? And often it's not about the extra couple thousand, right? It's, yeah, it's almost exactly. Like that. And also when people are being forced to sell their home, like even now, uh, because of interest rates rising this this much, if people are having bought a home and they're on this, um, um, not a fixed mortgage, uh, but what you, what's variable. that? Variable. Variable mortgage. Yeah. It means that mortgage can go up by like, I don't know, $500 a month. Oh, and easy. Some, yeah, and yeah. sometimes people can't afford that. So they're having to sell their home and it's sad so it's like when you you know when you walk people through that process that's another different ball game isn't it yeah and we're gonna probably we we may start to see that luckily in Canada we have what's called a stress test Mm -hmm. and a lot of people were qualified few percentage points higher Um, I know they don't like it when they have to qualify but this is the exact reason right that's why we have sort of the systems we do in Canada to sort of help protect prevent from that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But um, luckily, we're not seeing that so, so much. But oh, yeah, that's adding to people's bills for sure. You know? Yeah. Um, You know, you touched on COVID. That was a super interesting time. Like that wasn't a natural sort of change in, you know, it uh, unemployments and things like that. Like there's ebbs and flows in economies that can cause um, uh, you know, ups and downs and, and, and prices going up and things like that. This was totally unprecedented. Expected. We've it never seen it happened, before. It happened in March. Mm. And so we had all of these people who were, um, you know, just living their lives as they were all of a sudden in March, 2020 full shutdown of everybody's natural course of life. Mm. Okay. I, I didn't even know if I'd have a job. Let's be honest. Like, I mean, when, when everything shut down, <laughs> we're like, oh, wow, what's happening? What's yes. happening? But the interesting thing that happened, and I think it's important to share with people because some people don't realize why did everybody come to BC or why did all of these people move? And I think it's mm. a really important emotional connection that people need to understand. In August of that summer, May, May, we started to see people moving around a bit more. Uh, yes. By August, it was like, hey, there, there's something different. Like I'd done some relocations over the first five years, not a yes. ton. I wasn't a relocation specialist by any mm. means. August, my phone is ringing from people in Ottawa mm. and referrals from the island and referrals like from, um, you know, random places like more rural in, in like, you know, red deer and things like that. And I'm like, oh, this is interesting kept coming, kept coming by November of 2020. We knew something was different. We're like, this is something is totally different. There was more people coming here and then people upsizing. Oh, wow. Like crazy. Like I would say Gen X did a ton of real estate, you know, people that had kids that were sort of, you know, five to 20 in there, like 
move up, move up, move up. What we soon realized is people were making lifestyle choices. Overnight, people made a lifestyle choice. When they were in lockdown and kids were at school and they were running around and and, and they were like, oh my gosh, if this is my life, because we didn't really know what, what it was going to be like, right? Yes. We, were, we didn't know when the end was coming, these sorts of things, the mobility and people being able to move around. They were like, I need a yard. Yes. I need, I need, I need, I need to be able to go for a walk. <laughs> totally. So these yes. people that were in urban centers. So the cities, they couldn't do that. They got more family centric. They got yeah. more focused in on themselves and their smaller world. And their neighbors are like, shit, I don't know my neighbors in this mm. town. Yeah. Right. And 2020, the tail end of 2020 and 2021 were so many relocations and upsizing. Yes. And it was fascinating to watch yeah. happen. And then we also see that big rise. We saw that like hundred thousand dollars more for a house that we've well, never and seen that was before. that was pure supply and demand. Just like most yeah. of how COVID affected most of the economy, it was pure supply and demand. We yeah. just didn't have, and Kelowna in particular doesn't have a lot of single detached. Yes, you know, grow at a certain pace, but you can't build single detached overnight. Yes, so and they're not they're not building them here anymore. Everything you see is high rises now. Like sure. so, if, sure. you know. But even still, nobody's that's gonna... eighteen months on a wood frame and three years on a concrete, right? So yeah. you don't put those up overnight either. So it yeah. just put enormous pressure. And then people were making really, really emotional based purchases, which yes. <laughs> there's times I walk through a house and I'll tell people, do not fall in love with this house. Like yeah. <laughs> I can't do my job if you're falling in love with this house, because then you, you come from the heart sometimes with making mm, a mean, decision on the watch, but you know, sometimes we need them to be a little bit more, create a bit more space when making a choice, yeah. but Man, I'm telling you, those choices over COVID were very emotion centric yeah. choices. So you know, well, I mean, over people asked, with over asked, we need we need to get out of. I need to get out of the Dr Toronto area, right? Like, yes. Um, I think that people just started to value because value their freedoms and uh, more about who they are. Because yeah. during those times, it was like we the governments were making decisions for us, like left, right, and center, and sure. people really felt you know, displaced and they didn't feel safe. And so they wanted, I think most people, if they could, we saw it in America as well. Most people moved to areas where they felt they had more freedoms. Yeah, you know? and space, like Kelowna was, yeah. while everybody else was in full lockdown in cities, Yes. we're waving and we're waving to people i know we're going for walks to i mean like yeah, my little yeah. my, uh, in my backyard i have the lake here and i was like i could go Absolutely. there every day that was and that's there was a I huge difference one of the big appeals for for bc so mm -hmm. people didn't have to work from home or if they didn't have to go to work and they're working yes. from home they're like they're, they were they were at, they were taking a look around and it's like is this okay if we took that out of it if we took our commute mm. out of how we live what would that look like for us Yes. Which is brave as hell. Like yes. you got to pack up kids, pack up your life, maybe leave a major job, um, a, a relationship, yeah. anything for something to do that. It was like pioneering. Yeah. Was, but I think know, Canadians are pretty pioneering. I've, I've admired are, the Canadians you know? a lot, you know? Yeah. Um, they're pretty like, they go out and do it. They really do. So that was a unique emotional journey that was new for me in my career was helping okay. relocators. Okay. So you They're learned about that process as well. Totally. I was yes. boots on the street for them. Wow. So I was not only the logistic point person in terms of running all of that and like, but it was an enormous amount of trust. It was like trying to match neighborhoods. I'm like, tell me about who you want your neighbors to be. Like the questions I was asked wouldn't just be about price point It'd be like, okay, I know what your budget is. Yeah. But within that, you don't know Glen Rosa from Glenmore. Yes, of course. So it's like any me. anything else. If you went to a place, you wouldn't know, like your west so, west side, south side, east side, totally. like you know. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So then it was like, okay. Then I started asking really emotional centric questions. Mm. Who do you want your neighbors to be? Mm -hmm. Do you mind spending a bit more time in the car mm. for a bit more house, or yeah. you know, like asking questions like that? Do you want to have a bit more space for people to come and visit? Yeah. Or, you know, like, do you, do you like, so when, when you put them in that space, it would, it was easier to help guide them on, on this side. Yeah. Hopefully they came out for one visit. Um, but most of them, they were just feeling the reputation of Kelowna and the area and just be like, no, this is the space for yeah. us. I kind of actually did that when we bought our house. <clears throat> I'd actually never seen the house before we bought it. And we had one person here 
boots on the ground. And we we had our specific things like we want to be close to the school, blah, 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 blah. And mm-hmm. actually, if I think back, um, you know, I got exactly what I needed. Great. Like, you know, we had a, a we have a pool in our backyard for, at that time for our kids. My kids could walk to school. Um, it was just the actual house, which was different for me when I first moved to Canada because it was a, it's a wooden house. And I was used to like having like a, you know, a concrete house, I guess. Um, but over the years, I've, I've fallen in love with my wooden house and I absolutely love my that I have a fireplace. And now even now they don't build houses with fireplaces anymore in right. BC. Um, right. And so there's just these little things that you start uh, appreciating about your house. And I think that's why I was also inspired to to do today's podcast, because I think sometimes uh, it's like anything else. You know, we don't understand that we have a relationship with everything. Like you have a relationship with your home. You have a relationship with the things in your home. You have a relationship with money. You have a relationship with your partner, with your children. And so I was wanting to highlight a little bit today that you have a relationship with your home. And if you want that relationship to be good, then you have to close the gap. Just like me, when I first moved here, I really didn't like the house that much. And I needed to come around to understand, okay, well, what? And in my case, I will say, uh, the reason I wasn't so happy with my house because I was comparing I was ah. comparing it to my home that I had before, right. which was in Dubai. Right. Like you can't compare, it's right. different. <laughs> right. And so yeah. it, as long as we're comparing and having a past, again, it's in the past, you know, it's always about the, the memories in the past that we're comparing the future or the present and you will never be happy. But if you find yourself like really being present in the home where you are, the home will love you too. It's a really important point, actually, that you make, Deb, because, um, you know, we we were talking before just getting getting uh, acquainted again and chatting a bit. I'm I'm expecting over the next few years, just as COVID was a very different vibration for people um, in in their motivation for moving. One of the things that I think are going to be happening for buyers in particular um, is that I think they're going to grieve a bit. Mm. The, the 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 accelerated rate with which people um the very rate more the mortgage rates have been going up what they qualified for this time last year they don't anymore they don't it's sad so yeah. even even actually maybe not this time last year because we peaked out pretty much in february of last year i'm going to say mm. june or july mm. You know, we might have been looking at single detached. They were taking their time. They were seeing the market soften. That you know, they thought mm-hmm. they had some time, which they did, so to speak. Yes. But you know, Bank Canada just went boom, boom, boom so fast that yes. they were getting calls that are like, "Wow, so what's out there for six hundred now?" And I'm like, "It's not a single Nothing. detached anymore. We're in oh a town." Oh my god, it's terrible. So- to re I'm going to have, I'm probably going to have some reframing over yes. the next year, yes. <laughs> reframing people's, um, joy expectations and, and expectations, expectations of what the, what they w- would have been able to get a yeah, year ago. They like, can't you anymore. Know what? So maybe this wasn't your 10 year home. Mm-hmm. Let's go through this, you know, really fantastic townhouse or this condo in this thing mm-hmm. and reframe it as a, maybe this is your three year home. Yes. Or maybe we'll make, we'll make decisions that help you make decisions that mean like maybe you can rent it. And then the next one will be, but yes. let's not discount that this is still a really important. It's still a stepping stone, right? And I think that's why I was um, saying that even if you're renting a place, I honestly believe even if you're renting a place and it's you're not even the owner of the place, if you just love and respect where you are and you improve your uh, relationship to your to your home, whatever that is, an apartment, a one bedroom. I think if you do that, the place will love you back. So it doesn't matter really, you know, if you can afford this big one or that big one, just wherever you find yourself, if you can um, create that relationship of love and, and, you know, just, if you're in your space, just try and work with what you have. Like often, you know, we, we are so focused on what we want that we forget to be thankful for what we have. And that can happen a lot with housing and especially now, because there's such a, I mean, it's a little bit, you know, it's, there's always, there's never enough. There's always a demand. And now we find ourselves like in this kind of a lot, like a, like a log where nobody's moving because yeah. of interest rates. And, you know, so the market's a little bit slow, yeah. but it always works itself out because we need a house to live in, you yeah. know, and we that's, need a place that is to stay. Great. Like just coming back to the, this is your home. 
investment yes. clients, investment condo clients, they're their own thing. They're their own, like that, that's a different, but if we're talking a primary residence where this yes. is your home, um, for sure. It's interesting. One thing you said about, um, connecting, you know, with your home and maybe it wasn't your expectation of, of what it is. Um, <clears throat> sometimes we'll go through houses and, um, you know, be like when I saying like, how does this feel in that, you know, another thing is, um, smells, mm. smells in a home and, you know, other sensory elements that happen, like we're focused on sight and what we're seeing, but it's like, okay, so, but what, what do you feel like? Like, what do you smell? How, how are the other senses? Like, are, is there airflow in this house or, you mm -hmm. know, does it, does it and, and let's face it, unless it's brand new, someone else has lived in there. Yes. Like, how are they living? And in that takes a while. And I think that's what I first picked up when I moved into my home and that it took me a little while to kind of get that energy to get my energy oh my in the place. It matters. There's homes yeah. where I've walked in beautiful. There's I'm, I'm no saging. I'm <laughs> I, yeah, I've walked into homes, but just to speak, if it's not too much in the woo woo to talk about yeah, the energy yeah. in no, homes. No, literally, it's I've not woo -woo because home, energy is real. For sure. I've walked into homes where I'm like, absolutely not. Yeah. Like there is an energy in here. We don't know what it is. Mm. I don't know why it is, whether it's yeah. been, you know, stressed out dogs in the home or I don't know. But an interesting thing is sometimes I won't even say it. Mm -hmm. And clients are feeling it. Feeling it, yes. They're like energy I, never I, lies. Energy nope. never lies. What is happening? I'm I'm like they're stuck. They're uncomfortable. I can see yes. their body shift. They're not, you know, maybe opening up a cupboard or a drawer. They're not like connecting yeah. right now. Yes. They're walking through, they're quickly walking through rooms and coming back yes. out. And I'm like, are you, you know, are you feeling something? They're like, yeah, they just can't, you know, and and Sometimes it just can't be. No, exactly. And for me, that's the quickest way. It's like, I just pick up that energy and it's like, no, nope, this is a no for me. No, amount, no <laughs> amount of smudging is going to take the energy out of this home. <laughs> exactly. It will take some years, you know? Yeah. Oh my goodness. But Amy, this was so great to have this conversation with you because like I said, you know, I, I just believe honestly that everything in your life is a spiritual is a spiritual thing, your relationship with your husband, your wife, your children, your siblings, co-workers, your relationship with money, your relationship with your home. And so I wanted to bring you on today to talk a little bit about the process of when people do sell their house or if yeah. they're thinking about buying a new home and what would that mean? And it's a, it's a spiritual experience. And I think if listeners out there, if you're in a, in a, in a relationship with your home that you don't like, like it's your responsibility to change it. The home is there. Maybe try to give it a coat of paint. Maybe, I don't know, do small things that you can change. I remember actually one of the things that I learned from, uh, from Amy is that like, even if you just change the doorknob like it, oh, yeah. it, it shifts you know something in the house or or like oh you just know that you don't like that light that's been hanging there for like 10 years like it's oh, so easy just to I change to that the lighting is so crucial yeah. to a home yeah sometimes I'll walk in a home and I'm like guys oh my gosh do not you got to look past the lighting in here it's sucking like it's too warm and the the light is just gone everywhere or it, it's like fluorescent lights and we're at like so many lumens. I'm like, oh my gosh, we got to soften in here. Like yes. lighting is so huge. Lighting sh sh can shift a home. Throw a light coat of paint on walls Yeah, can shift a home. Another big one is decluttering. Mm. Sometimes it becomes a representation of what's going on in our minds. Yes, and, of course. And the heaviness, especially if you're- Well, the sur your surrounding is representing what's going on inside of you. If you're feeling a heaviness in your home, lighten the lights, lighten the walls and declutter. Mm -hmm. And you would be shocked at when you can move air and energy can go around and, mm -hmm. and move up and down hallways. Mm -hmm. Your home contains you. It holds you just like a person can hold space for you. Yes, your, your home holds you. Space True. And you need to, you need to take care of it. And like, like, and I know for some people say, oh, I don't have money or this or that. But like, if you do something small, it's just like with anything else, like people say, oh, I want to lose 90 pounds, whatever. It's like, okay, well, you're not going to do that overnight. Well, why don't we just start now? Like, and if you lose two pounds in one month, it's, it's towards that goal. Right. So I think sometimes we are so focused on the on the outcome of the goal that we don't even start <laughs> you know because we're afraid we're not going to make it yeah, for sure. Guess what? You don't even have to spend money to declutter. In fact, yes. Facebook Marketplace means you're going to make money. 
<laughs> or right? just call like what I did. I just called the Salvation Army. You come pick up all this or stuff. Or donate. <laughs> Be exactly. altruistic and donate. Yes, but, yes. Uh, there's definitely small changes that you can do in that regard to 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 make to your surroundings your look current better. space yes. uh, to you know get your fun your function to match your flow. There you go. Well, Amy, I thank you so much for taking the time Thanks today to help me. us and our listeners a little bit. If you're struggling out there and if you, hey, I'm going to put all Amy's information at the bottom of the podcast. If you need somebody just to come and give you a, a little, um, you know, talk on, can you sell the house? How can you sell the house? How much can you sell the house for? Can I do something with a light, with a paint? I like would love your that. Girl. I, would I want know. To walk, love it or list your, it. <laughs> exactly. If you're living, if you're living in Kelowna, because she is here, so it's not for international people, unfortunately. But you can always call her. You know, contact we her. Can talk Kelowna. Exactly. Call, call yeah. Talk exactly. Kelowna. So thank you so much, Amy. Uh, so okay. great to see you again. Always such thank a pleasure. You. And um, I'm sure we will bump into each other soon. We will. Happy holidays to you. You too. Happy holidays. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.